Hey, buddy, it is great to be here with y'all tonight. And as you can see, I've got <laughs> a guest with me here tonight. This is Tom from the Watchman River Channel. How are you doing, brother? I am doing fantastic, but I have to tell you one thing. What's that? You make me look terrible. Like how is you that? got this, you got this beautiful dark beard and the hair, and I'm this bald, pale guy. I look like I, I look like the Lord took me home a year or two ago. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> it's awesome. Chooch is always Chooch is always saying that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, dude, it's it's um it's so and, and guys, listen, as always, give us a thumbs up in the chat. That way I okay, I see some already. Emily Praise, thank you. Maria Torres, thank you. So yeah, it's it's just awesome to have. Tom, um, on with us tonight. I found out about your channel, Tom, through my friend Pete Garcia. He likes your channel a lot. I love and that guy. Told me about you. Yeah, Pete is a great guy. Do you, and, what is his art medium? Do you know? Have you ever seen? His actually, art yeah, medium? it's it's this it's the same thing I use. It's actually a program. Um, it's hard to explain. It's basically essentially text to image via AI that you, you can like type in prompts and it creates art and then you Incredible. keep massaging it until it comes out with what you want. It's, it's really cool. beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful artwork. So I, I, uh, I do that as well. And he introduced me to that as well, but yeah, I started, I started watching your videos and I love how um, you bring people's comments into the conversation and you're just, you know, very real. That's, that's what I always, uh, look for i think that's what i strive for here as well as i i always say i'll never turn this camera on unless i feel like the lord has put up something on my heart awesome. uh, to say and i just i don't want to be a content producer here to perform and i love that about you that you're you're not there performing you're just being who you are i i, I don't want to play pretend christianity i did that for a lot of years and it's embarrassing to talk about, but I, I I played a Christian for a lot of years, and it was just recently that the Holy Spirit really grabbed a hold of me and said, "No, no, 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 we're done playing. You know, now mm -hmm. it's time for you to follow me." And it's it was a big turning point in my life. That's awesome. So you so you started going to this. Your channel is called Watchman River. And yes. by the way, guys, I'm going to link it below, of course. But you started going and. Um, sitting down by this river and, and recording YouTube videos. And I bet you never thought in your wildest dreams that you'd be making YouTube videos in a van down by the river. <laughs> in I fact, a lot of people it. right now are like, where is he? Where's Tom? Why where, yeah, where is his car? This is the only non-river Tom video. <laughs> the car wouldn't fit in the living room, so I had to leave <laughs> it in the garage. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. if you're going to be like sitting in the dark in your car by the river tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah. the I'm telling you, I went down to that river and the first time I went down there, I just looked at it and thought, I can't believe I live like a half a mile from here. It's beautiful. It was beautiful. The second time I went, I had my phone and I, and you know, my wife and I were going through a lot of business crashes and downsizing and a lot of really hard times, mm -hmm. but I wasn't discouraged through the whole thing because I just kept feeling the spirit was like, go down to the river. And I took my phone and I made a video and I thought, well, I'll upload this to YouTube. And I came home and told my wife, I made this video. It's a Christian video because I had done secular stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And she said, okay. And what's your plan? And I said, I don't know. I said, I, I, I don't know. I, I, and the next day I went and I did another video. And when I came home that day, she was like, so what's going on? I'm like, the Lord wants me to make videos down there and I'm going to do this. And my whole goal is I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And if we're here another year, which I don't think we will be, but I, I should say, <laughs> oh, but, I if, not, man, <laughs> not, but if we're here another year, if I have a hundred subscribers and 50 people watching the videos, I'll be happy. But my main plan or goal is that I want to hear that I changed one person's life, that the Lord used me. And Amen. working through me changed one person's life. And I've been really, really blessed with this channel. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine the, the way the Lord would use. Not just, and th Here's the thing. It's not just me. Mm -hmm. It's the community. I'm telling Amen. you, my community is as much as part of my channel. This, I'm just that guy, that vessel that's being used. But my community is amazing. I think you know that. You know, yep. they're amazing. Yep, they really are. And, and that's the same with me. You know, I never 
ever thought that I would be uh, making YouTube videos. I'm a very anti-social media person. I like, I haven't had Facebook in 12 years, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just not that guy and would never have wanted to. Like if the Lord said, Hey, do you want to make YouTube videos? I would have been like, no, I do not. Um, <laughs> I get that. But you know, I just, was had a moment like you where I was like the, the Holy spirit put it on my heart. I turned YouTube on because that's what the Lord was telling me to do. And I, you know, just tried to stay obedient to, to that and very similar to your story. So, and let me just, let me just add one more thing. A big reason why I was being drawn to that river was looking at the world. And I, and it was the first year of my life, 2022, where I thought, I think we're going to get raptured this year. I think this could be the year. I've never thought that in 2021. I thought, well, it could be this year, but as we got closer to the fall, I'm like, I don't think it's this year, but mm -hmm. 2022 starting right in the beginning, January, February, I was like, I just, there's something going on. This just mm. feels like the year. And that's, that's, I feel like that's why I was led down to that river. Yep. Yep. And I, I want to make one thing uh, just really clear before we go any further. And that's just that, um, Everything that I talk about and everything that Tom talks about, our, our goal 100% is to bring people to Jesus, to point Amen. people to Jesus. And Amen. We, we both want to make that very clear tonight, that this is all about Jesus. That everything that we do, everything that we talk about, um, yep. our goal is that you come to understand that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and it is by believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth and have placing your faith in him and him alone that wow. salvation comes. And so you can, I guess, share a little bit there as well as just what's your, what's your goal? What does God put your goal on your heart for, for making your videos? My, my goal in making my videos is to have Tom stay out of them, you mm. know, because I'm a joker. I, I'm, I'm a joke. Like I'm, I, I pray every time before I turn that camera on, I'm like, Lord, please keep me out of it, please. You know, today I made a joke about smoking crack. That's not right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I slipped a little, but and I've never smoked crack, but I, I use that humor. I'm like, I shouldn't use that humor, Lord. <laughs> but I, my goal is to stay out of it and just let him lead. Mm -hmm. And I just just like what you just said, it's all about Jesus. We can't, you know, the rapture's not first and Jesus second. Right. You know, it's Jesus first. The rapture is beautiful. I can't wait. But Jesus, point them to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And and the cool thing is the rapture is Jesus. I mean, that's just, it is. there literally is not a rapture. If you take Jesus out of the picture. Uh, it's, it's just us wanting to be with Jesus. That's the rapture. Amen. Plain Amen. and simple. If you boil it down. So guys, listen. Uh, grab some fried spam, yes, or a flagon of kombucha, <laughs> or whatever you like to <laughs> eat or drink with some old friends. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any recommendations for tonight? Uh, I've I've got a coffee and okay. I've got a huge bowl of Mountain Dew because my friend Pastor Rob Lee he's he jokes because he loved the day I said you should have a big bowl of Mountain Dew, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so listen, we're going to just talk about um, end times signs tonight, guys. And something that you've been saying is, is really resounding with me. And it's I wanted to bring that up tonight. And that's, um, you know, when we look out at the world right now, considering end time signs and trying mm -hmm. to, to decide, or like, are these the last days? Um, when we look out there, do you see end time signs and, and basically the things that are pointing us or revealing to us the truth that Jesus is showing up soon. Do you see those things like slowing down now or speeding up? Oh yeah. They're, they're speeding up. I mean, I, I keep telling all my watch from river family, like, look, if I could, if I saw one of the major signs going in the other direction, I might be thinking maybe it's not the time, maybe it's not the time, but every sign, Every sign he talked about is ramping up like birth pains. Every single one of them. You look at the famine, like they're, they're, the governments are telling us famine's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, they're telling us, well, expect empty shelves next year. Expect that they're telling us. And then when you hear about the farmers putting in 
you know, a lot of them couldn't get their crops in the ground. And then a lot of them are saying, we're going to get 30 to 40% yield at the most. And that's mm -hmm. unheard of. It's right. unheard of. There's not going to be enough food in a year to feed the world. Right. Right. It's, I, I'm seeing the same thing. I mean, I think that when we, when we look out there, uh, we, we can, I want to ask the chat this right now, actually. Yeah. Okay. So in the chat, do, do you guys out there, because we have 1,425 brothers and sisters in Christ with us, or I hope you're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Maybe some of you aren't. And that's wonderful too. We're, we're mm. glad everyone is here. Mm. But you who are watching tonight, type in the chat. Um, yes, if you see things speeding up or no, if you see things slowing down and kind of um, the trend being more towards like we're going towards just back to good old normal days. And, you know, just look at the chat, everyone, and see the live chat here and see what people are saying. I'm just seeing right now a wall of yes. Just yes, 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 yes. I haven't seen a single no yet. Wow. And, you know, this is interesting because I always like what how you, you know, in your channel, you bring up comments. And I yeah. like to ask people and do polls and stuff to because it's not just about me. It's not about yeah, our exactly. Friends. So it's cool exactly. to see that other people are, are seeing the same thing, isn't it? It really is. It really is. I just, I'm just looking at sign after sign after sign after sign. And, and, and I always say this, Tyler, I always say when, when I was looking at Bible prophecy in the eighties and nineties, mm -hmm. something would happen like this little minor thing. And we'd be jumping for joy. The Lord's coming yes. back soon. The Lord. And yes. I said, now in an afternoon, you can get, five times the amount of stories you've got in a decade that, you know, it's like every oh, day, yeah. every day. It's, it's totally ramped up. I mean, I, I've been, the Lord really kind of made me started paying attention to biblical end times and studying eschatology and stuff, you know, but I would say from like 1995 on. And I remember, you know, being like a teenager and just scrounging for, um, radio programs or prophecy magazines. And there was just barely anything barely that you could anything. find happening that was like prophetically significant. And now it's like within the last couple hours, something has happened. Exactly. You exactly. can't keep up with, you can't even catalog it all anymore. My wife says to me every morning, what are you going to do your video on today? And I said, well, I never know. I always have to ask the Holy Spirit like to lead me. Right. And she goes, yeah, but what subject? I said, I don't know. I haven't looked at the news yet. And I go down to the river and it's like, I'm like, all right, I've got 50 stories to choose from. Which one do I pick today? And every day. And they're all new every time. A lot of mm -hmm. times I do a segment called skim the news where mm -hmm. I just look at the headlines because it's I don't want to zone in on any one story. It's like, you guys got to hear this. Look at all the stuff that's happened in the last 24 hours man exactly it's incredible so i think you and i are both saying like if things were just slowing down and, and looking like oh you know what you know we got excited there for a little blip but yep. uh you know things have are definitely getting back to normal i think you and i both maybe would be a little bit less alert or less on high alert we wouldn't be exactly. watching so intently exactly but it's like i feel like I can't stop. How do, how do you stop when things just keep getting more intense? Is that how when it's feel? rolling like that? It's like a steamroller. Yeah. It feels like a, feels like you're on a train track. You're tied to it and the tr locomotive's coming at you and it's just gathering an intensity. And the only thing, there's two things that I've seen turn around a little bit, but they're not, they're so minor, but I just have to mention like the stock market was really tanking for a few weeks and now it's just having this rally. But I think all the pros have already pulled out. And I think mm -hmm. this is the amateurs. And I really believe it's very close to, you know, see you later. Mm -hmm. And then the gas prices dropped a little bit. But we know with the OPEC cutting production next month, they're going to go way higher than they are now. Oh, yeah. I think with both of those things, with the stock market and with gas, if you look out at the horizon and you see the events that are already in motion, I mean, there's just no question as to what's going to happen. Exactly. Uh, ultimately, with and the we economy, have the stock market, and the gas, and everything, it's it's just. I mean, we're headed straight for a crash. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And people are trying to compare it. Like, do you think it's going to be like two thousand eight? Do you think it's like? No, no, no. You don't understand. This one's intentional. <laughs> I yeah. believe it's intentional. I agree. And this one, it, they're trying to set up the one world government. You know, Absolutely. they're trying to. They're getting the world ready for Antichrist. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. What do you think about 
what, what were your thoughts when you heard about the rabbis who were saying, we've been talking to Messiah? Oh, man, that was, you know, they've been saying that for a couple years now. And so when I saw them uh, bring it up again, in fact, I have, uh, let's see, I think I have that article. Um, yeah, let me let me pull that up on the screen yeah. so people can see it while we're talking. One second, let me click this uh, link here so people can look at it. Here we go. So this is this is from September 29th, Israel wow. Today. And it says, Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with the Messiah. And, um, I, you know, they like I said, they've been saying that for a couple years. But the fact that they're still saying that, mm. it's kind of like what you and I are talking about. Like, things aren't getting less exciting or, or the momentum's not slowing down. It's just maintaining and speeding up exactly exactly and and then what i told my audience either today or yesterday is i said if it was just the rabbis who are announcing this it, i'd be skeptical of it more so but when you see that they're building a high-speed railroad yeah to go from the airport in israel straight to the temple mount or wherever the you know they think it's either going to be built on the temple mount site or a little bit i think south of it uh, right. But when you look at that, it's like, okay, and then the red heifers have arrived. To me, it's if I take those little things individually, it's like, well, I don't know. It, it might not be. But mm -hmm. just the fact that it's all happening, th those three little signs are converging at the same time shows me, keep your eye out on that. It seems like, oh, yeah, you know, something's going on there. Oh, huge. I mean, it's you, you can't ignore this stuff because of the convergence of all these things. And I was thinking today, I was, I was, praying earlier today and I was thinking, Lord, you know, what's a good analogy? Cause I was thinking about how, you know, you are saying this and I'm saying this, that, that, that it's like things, things aren't stopping, things aren't slowing down. So we can't just stop watching. We can't just uh, quit looking. And um, I, I kind of, I don't know if it's the best analogy, but this analogy popped into my head and I wanted to share it. It's like, if you told people, you know, in the last days when Jesus comes back, the clouds are going to be rainbow colored. And so, you know, all like, let's say 2015, you know, the clouds started being red. And then 2017, the clouds were red and orange. And then 2020, they were red, orange, and like yellow. That. And then 2020, they're red, orange, yellow, and green. And it's like people out there are, are scoffing and mocking still. And they're like, yeah, well, the the rainbow is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And right now it's on only red, orange, yellow, green, and you know, like exactly. Yeah, but it's not white. They, they're not they're not going whiter. They're, it's like every day I wake up and there's a little bit more of the next color. Yeah, you know, exactly. and, and so it's like, how how can we stop watching when every time we look out there, it's like, well, it's even closer to being full on, you know everything you're supposed to look for so that's kind of an analogy that popped up in my head i love that i love that and it's so true i love that because it every, every day that i wake up and i look at the news every single day i'm like oh now this happened oh this happened no oh, that you know this morning moscow i guess kind of threatened tel aviv and yeah you know it, it's, i'm like whoa it's just <laughs> you can't keep track of how fast it's coming at you right I mean, for, for for years now, we've been talking about things like Ezekiel 38 and how, you know, eventually we would see Russia and Iran and Turkey kind of come in alignment against Israel. And, P, and I remember from this from the Syrian area, which they've been there for years now. Right. And I remember people saying, what are you talking about? Like Russia and, and Israel are super friendly. You know, I you, you've got this all wrong. Yep. But again, it's one of those deals like with the clouds that you just like every day. It's like, well, now it's red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, and indigo. It's like it just keeps getting further and further aligned. And those pieces cl are clicking into place. And you're seeing an even clearer picture every day. It's I don't exactly. know how you just throw in the towel and stop. I don't know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. And I keep telling my audience like I, <laughs> I know that people want to ignore all these signs 
but they they're hitting us in the face every day all these signs and not one of them is going in the other direction like we talked about earlier mm -hmm. everyone is going forward every sign is going forward and at some point you got to look and go we're we're there like i can't st i always have this thing i talked about it in my show today or whatever you want to call it, my video today mm -hmm. i have this thing that i really have always believed the rapture would be mid-september to mid-october i just think it lines up with the feast it doesn't have to be right on the feast of trumpets mm -hmm. and so today i did like a an apology video but i really wasn't apologizing i was saying like i was wrong and i'll i'll own up to that but i can't stop watching like right. any other year i'd be like well next year you know i will look september not this year this year it was like okay we're at october 17th but you know what? Russia's threatening everyone with nukes. All the signs are there. There's famines coming. There's wars, rumors of wars. There's earthquakes in various places. All the signs are there. Not to mention all the World Economic Forum stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's what a time to be alive, huh? Oh, it's incredible. And and I agree. I'm like you too. I mean, I'm kind of one of those people where I've got like a favorite time of year, you know, where I, I look at um spring summer i'm really a big fan of summer kind of pentecost season yeah and, and it kind of it ends with feast of trumpets type of uh you know that's really kind of the end of this of the summer for the hebrews and for the jews and so i'm i like that and i'm always looking at that but it's it's again it's one of those things where i have to i hold that uh with an open hand you know i don't i'm not dogmatic about it i don't clutch onto that because my hope is not in a date, like we always like to say, my hope yes. is in Jesus Christ, not in a date. Yes. So when you see all these things just continuing to intensify and ramp up and the birth pangs getting more intense and closer together, you you can't, you just can't stop watching um, exactly. because there it's it, there's too much going on. You can't say, well, my favorite month passed or my favorite watch day passed, so... I'm just totally like I went from, you know, RapCon zero or one. I'm now just I'm not even at alert. I, I, there's no alert status. You can't yep. do that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I found that recently way more than before. I've stopped thinking about the rapture date and I'm looking mm -hmm. for those perfect seven year period. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, like, we're, we're there, you know, right. Those seven years could start at any moment, which sure. means the rapture before then. But I'm looking for the seven year period that fits perfectly with everything we're talking about and all the signs Jesus told us to look for. And are we really going to be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage a year from now with everything we're seeing coming at us? I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't either. I don't. And I want to say hi to Pete, by the way. Pete Garcia's in the chat there. I just noticed. So, hey, Pete, good to see you, brother. Pete, Thanks for you, you've you've given me so much material for my videos. I thank you for that. Yeah, and and thank you, Pete, for kind of introducing me to to Tom, um, and and telling me about his channel because it's great. And I recommend you guys go check out Tom's channel, Watch Watchman River. Um, but since you since you brought it up, like the days of Lot, I mean, to me that is one of that's one of the biggest things. Let's talk about that, and then let's talk about Israel a bit more. But Days of Lot is one of the biggest things that the Lord keeps putting on my heart because we're, I feel like there's this really interesting dichotomy. It's like this really, really fine balance that the Bible describes for the time of the rapture. And it's like a, it's a really unique thing. And it's a world that is relatively normal. So you see the eating and drinking and buying and selling, but it's extremely just rampantly wicked and there's, there's like complete destruction on the horizon. And like, that's not the, that's, that's not the norm. That's a pretty unique type of scenario. And it's not the type of scenario that can last a really long time is, are you seeing that as well? I'm, I'm seeing that exactly. I, I just can't, I'm, yeah, we're living through a time when Russia is literally has nukes parked 15 miles from their border and they're threatening everyone around there. And I don't know what, I, you know, I don't play politics. I don't, I don't really care about the politics of it because I care about the Jesus aspect of everything, but I don't know what's going on with that. But I know one thing it's, it's serious. It, it's, it's more serious. If you watch the mainstream media, they're barely talking about it. 
I always tell my wife, I think people are just right now starting to see the little tip of the iceberg in the Titanic. And just they're just starting to lift their heads a little bit and going, what's going on in the world? You know, but for the most part, their heads are in the sand. You know, they watch they watch mainstream media and they just don't understand what's going on in the world. Right. Like how how perilous things really are. I mean, someone I think it was you, you you brought up a uh, Terry James's article recently. And he yes. was talking about how, you know, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, people were freaking out about the level of danger that there was. And he's looking around like, uh, why is no one way worse? About- it's like worse right now. Yeah. And there's the, I've even heard a few experts out there saying the same thing. Like we are at a more, a much more dangerous point right now than the Cuban missile crisis. But what are we, what's going on out there in the world? People are just eating, drinking, buying and selling, watching their soap operas and going to restaurants. I mean, it's so the days of lot. It's so perfect. It's so perfect. It just feels like we're so close. It really does, man. It, we should we should read that scripture of uh, Luke 17, 28 through 30. It says, likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So I, I think there's just so much there in that scripture. You know, yeah. it, it shows you a world where things are relatively normal. There's commerce. There's, um, I think, planting and building is, is interesting. Planting is, yes. you know, there's, there's not famine yet. There's not world war. It's not an apocalyptic scenario. And then you see God's people removed to safety and then judgment coming. Yeah. I mean, how incredible is that? That that's just packed into one ver, you know, one it couple verses. There blows my mind. It really blows my mind. And it it's so precise. Like that's where we're at. It does. It feels exactly where we're at. And it's, <laughs> I, I, just, I, I don't know how much further. How, I don't know how sustainable this world is with all this stuff that's going on right now. I've said before. Look, if we push aside Christianity and just look at it from just a, a man without God, like. I'd be building an underground bunker for my family right now, you know? And, and the funny thing, I have no worries because man, Jesus just gives you that, that calm, you know, I don't have worries. I'm, I'm excited. I'm worried for the people that are going to be left behind, mm. but it's, it's, it's whoa, such a time as this, you know, we yeah. were placed here, all of us, meaning me and you and every person watching this and every person that watched, we were placed here for a reason right now, mm-hmm. the spirit, is moving through us, and I don't know if you've noticed, but there, I've never seen Christians who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture unite like we have in the past oh, yeah. four to f- three or four months, maybe five. It's it's incredible. It really incredible. is like the way the Lord has brought this community together. Uh, it's so incredible to see, and I think it's so it's such a blessing because I I, I know you know a very common story out there is that. Either there people go to a church where they don't even mention prophecy, or people can't find even a good church to go to. And the Lord has brought this community together online where mm. we fellowship with each other and we encourage each other as we see that day approaching. And it's like such a blessing for me and for all of us to be able to do this. I mean, if we didn't have this platform i think we would a lot of us would feel very alone you're right you're right in my area i've had people email me i'm in central connecticut and they've said hey i'm also in central connecticut where do you go to church i'm looking for a church that that teaches end time stuff i'm like i don't know of one that exists first Mm -hmm. of all the northeast is kind of known to be really you know Mm -hmm. we're not the bible belt up here you know (laughs) there's not a lot of bible believing churches in this area but i i tell them look find a church or don't find a church. I have, I go to a church and I love my pastor, but he doesn't teach on end time stuff. But I Mm -hmm. tell them that's when you supplement on YouTube, you know, Mm -hmm. because what I did was I go to my church. I I have fellowship there. I enjoy it. But when I wanted to learn about Bible prophecy and see what everybody had to say about it, I was watching JD Farag and Jack Hibbs and you know, all the rest. Right. 
Right. Same. I mean, I'm, I'm so thankful that we have this family online and, and yes. I just want everyone to know that, you know, everyone in the chat and everyone who comments and stuff, you, you are all just as much a, a part of this as Tom or I are, or I am. Um, we're not, we're no one special. We're all just brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're all called to walk out whatever it is that God has called us to do for the kingdom. And every part of the body is just as important as the other. And so we just love getting together and being able to do this with each other. And this is a blessing tonight to be able to just be together and encourage one another. Isn't it? And we need, we need you guys. We really need you guys. You know, we we're spreading a message. Sometimes I feel like Noah swinging a hammer, you know, I'm like, you guys, <laughs> I'm telling the world, like you guys, it's going to rain, like water's going to fall from the sky. I know you've never seen that, but, and they're just laughing and, you know, and I'm just swinging the hammer, you know, that's what mm -hmm. I feel like today. Like you guys wake up, look around what's going on. It's time to wake up. Absolutely. But I Absolutely. need, I need all these viewers out here. I you just, I need it. I get so much encouragement. I'm sure you do too. And it's just oh, so, yeah. it's wonderful. It's beautiful. It really is. It, you know, another thing I was thinking about with the days a lot, you know, we see right now, like there's still a semblance of, of commerce. There's a semblance of um, like a, there's, but there's still food on the shelves in most places, you know, no one, we're not all as far as a, the entire world, there's not a worldwide famine and there's not worldwide war going on right now. Although that stuff is all on the horizon. Another thing that makes me think of the days of Lot is how wicked it was mm. uh, in Lot's time. Because I always like to point out, you know, Lot wasn't in his bunker uh, Ramboing it out with his machine guns and his chicken and his beanie weenies and like war paint on. He was just sitting at the city gate. Exactly. But Sodom and Gomorrah was a wicked place. Mm. And doesn't that sound like our world? It does. It does. I I look at news articles and shake my head and just go, Lord, how much more can you take the wickedness of this world? Mm. You know, and I, I told a story the other day about I, w I was on the road and I said, I'm, I'm not a fast driver, but I'm not a slow driver. I'm the speed limit to five over it. <laughs> and I was on the road and all of a sudden this guy was on my tail and I just saw his arms flying and he's mad at me. And I'm like, all right, how do I get away from this guy? Let him go around me because. You know, I'm taking my time. I'm not in any hurry. And I'm just, I'm literally like kind of having compassion on him going, look, Lord, let me move over here so he can get around me. So mm -hmm. I kind of speed up at this, you know, I get to a red light and I speed up a little bit in the next lane and he flies by me with his fingers flying out of the window and he's very upset. And I'm like, wow. And then he, he turns off and gives me a farewell finger. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, as he does that, I, I look in my rearview mirror and there's another guy right on my bumper. <laughs> and I and I just finished recording my video. So I am just like, feel like I'm glowing with the Holy Spirit. And this guy's <laughs> on me and he is just, and I move over for him and he's giving me the finger. And I'm like, Lord, honestly, you know, my heart, I wasn't playing the male game that he used to play where you kind of box somebody. Right. In. There was no <laughs> games. I just was trying to get home and it, it <laughs> blew my mind how angry these two people. And I just started realizing like, the drivers are angrier. And my comments flooded with people saying, I've noticed it the last few months. The, the drivers are going crazy. And everyone, you know, you go to a store, everyone's angry. And, you know, I go to Walmart. I'm smiling at everybody. And everybody looks really miserable. And it's just, it's mm. heartbreaking, you know. It really is. I, you know, I just thought of while you were talking about that. Um, one of my best friends he does real estate, so he's driving around all the time in his car. And that is something he's been saying to me the last year. He's been he's been telling me, he's like, Tyler, I don't he's like he's a believer and he be, he's now believing like, well, I think it is the end times um, because he didn't really before. But he was telling me, he's like, there is something different. He goes, dude, everywhere I go, the drivers are insane. He's mm. like, everyone is full of anger. He's like, I've been driving. I drive all the time, all over the place. I've been doing this for years and years. And he goes, something is different. Like he brought up the very same thing that you did. Yeah. I'm telling you that there's something. Hey, can we talk about, I've talked about this on my channel and I thought I was insane. One day I just said to them, you guys notice the sun's different. 
the clouds are different, the sky's different. And I and I really thought everyone was going to think I was nuts because I was saying the clouds have this different contrast and they're puffier and they look closer to the earth and the sun is hitting the trees at night and the sun is stronger than it's ever been. The sun just feels stronger. And I, and I thought it's just me. I'm nuts. But I kept telling my wife the last few months, we go out for drives because I have a two-year-old. So sometimes mm -hmm. she drives us nuts. So we drive her at night for a little while. Yeah. So, so I took her for a drive and every night the sunsets were, I've never, they were like, you know, those once in a summer sunsets that are just right. the sunset we're getting every night. So wow. I, I thinking I'm a madman and I, let that out there. And I'm telling you, Tyler, the comments started flooding in of people saying, I've been saying that to my family. I've been, I got hundreds of comments of people saying, I've been saying the exact same thing. And really? then somebody actually, somebody took my two minute clip where I talked about that and they threw it on Facebook in a group of people that watch the sky and they're not, they're not believers. Uh -huh. It's just, you know, and they said, this guy's a little, you know, nutty religious, but listen <laughs> to what he's saying here. And they're like, somebody else is seeing it finally. And, and there are people in there saying, I've been a photographer doing sky shots for 30 years. And they're like, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like what's going on this past few months. So like everything's different. And then wow. one more thing, somebody in the comments said to me, Tom, you're my age. Cause you know, I'm 59. And the guy said, do you remember when we were young and the sky was, the sun was golden and you could look at it for a few seconds before it would, you turn your head. And mm -hmm. I said, and I, you know, I'm looking at the comedy he goes, try looking at it now. And mm -hmm. I, and I thought, I didn't notice that. You know, I noticed it was stronger, but so I went outside. As soon as he said it, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. I couldn't look at the sun for a quarter of a second. It looked like the brightest LED light I've ever seen. And they were talking about that in that group also. They were like, the sun is white now. It's no wow. longer yellow. Yeah, it really blew my mind. That I'm, As you're talking, I'm looking at the uh, chat and there's tons of people here saying the same thing that they, they see. I have not noticed that at all. Um, yeah. I've just That's not something that I've realized, but... Uh, there's a lot of people in the chat that are saying the same thing. I, and you know, I think that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. And one more, it. one more thing that I noticed in my yard this year that the grass was burning in a different way than I've ever seen. And I just thought I'm nuts again. <laughs> the, the grass just was so brown from being burned, but any place where the sun didn't hit all day, it wasn't just green. It was the most beautiful green grass I've ever seen. And I said that in my channel. And a landscaper said, dude, I own a landscaping company. I've been doing it 38 years. He goes, this year, I've never, he goes, we have lawns that were watering all day long that turn brown. But anywhere where the shade is, it's the greenest grass I've ever seen. It's, Weird. It's, yeah, I don't know. You know, I I don't know. It's just, it blew my mind that people that saw. That is wild. Was, it's kind of like, you know, recently I, I posted a video about a dream that I had regarding two moons. I saw two moons and I just, for some reason in my dream, I knew that the rapture was happening. And my wife had had a dream like that. And and I had never, I mean, that sounds so weird. And I had never thought about that kind of stuff. But if you go and you look on YouTube, there's a lot of Christians on there who literally are just posting videos and saying, I don't, and I don't know what this means either, but they're saying, I don't know what this means, but I had this dream about, seeing two moons and knowing the rapture is going to happen. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's incredible stuff going on. We're living in incredible times. I know that the Bible says the Lord is going to be pouring out his spirit on us, that there's going to be wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. It talks about that in Acts chapter two. Um, and that's the stuff we're talking about here. I mean, these things, the Bible said there would be amazing things happening. We're living in times that are not normal. This is Definitely. not normal. And some people are almost like boiled frogs where they're they're starting to feel like the, this really weird world we're living in is normal. Guys, this is not normal. We're this is nowhere even close to normal. No. How things are going on these days. No. And, and I don't I don't think it's ever going to return back to normal. You know, I, th I think we're not long for for this world. <laughs> Jesus is coming to get us soon. No, I mean absolutely. One thing we say a lot here is you know, normal isn't coming back. Jesus is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking about, just getting back to the kind of the people being crazier and stuff. You mentioned the drivers. My friend mentioned the drivers. Another guy that I know who uh, works with me was saying that, you know, he's like, man, when I grew up and going to school and stuff, 
Like we didn't have the SWAT teams coming into our classes and three to four you know, times a month, the school being shut down over fears of uh, an active shooter. And he's like, my, you know, I've got a kid in school as a teenager and like three times in the last month and two times in the month before they shut the school down for these things. And he's like, this is not how kids should be growing up. And he asked me, he's like, what's going on with this world? I think, I think that's, I think that's the saddest thing that's yeah. going on in the last two years. Sorry. It's terrible. What they're doing to children, what I've seen them do to children that I'm still watching children get off of buses with masks on <sighs> in Connecticut. And it's it just, so it breaks my heart. Like we, we ended up pulling our kids out at the beginning of the pandemic and mm. we homeschool our kids because wow. I just, I said, my kids aren't cattle. They're not going to wear these yeah. Yeah. masks forever. You know, I hear you. I, I hear you. For children. I just, you know, it's like the things, Yep. The things this world is doing to kids and with the, you know, the, the shows they're oh, seeing and uh, just the so sexualizing disgusting. of children it's now disgusting. is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. We had a, we had something happen recently, even locally. I mean, the, 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 uh, the, they're trying to purposely bring children to these events where they're pushing absolute perversion out in public and they're trying to celebrate it and, it is, it is beyond, and, and again, you go back to the days of Lot. You know, that's where we get sodomy from, Sodom yeah. and Gomorrah, yeah. sodomites. I yeah. mean, and, and again, I did a video not that long ago. You know, I don't use the world's terms. I don't use Satan's phrases and terms that he's developed for what he wants to, people to call it. I call it pride and sin because that's what it is. It is sin, and it's pride in that sin. Exactly. And that is that's what was the hallmark of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were proud of their sin, and if you didn't participate and and um, allow the the mob mentality to have its way with you, then they would they they begin to surround you and beat on your door and attack you. And that's that's exactly what Lot today was like. And that's where we're at. If you yeah. don't capitulate and promote even yeah this agenda. You're surrounded and canceled and attacked. Yeah. Well, if you're not for it, then they say you hate it and that's hate speech and you need to be canceled. It's it's horrendous. And the fact that the fact that they're doing it to children, I just and the fact that there are teachers in some of these schools that I just can't imagine. They're not standing well, standing up saying, wait a minute, we're not I'm not participating in this, mm -hmm. you know, but it's that fear. It's people have a fear. They just everyone just falls in line. And I think. That's the thing that surprised me the most the past few years is how much everyone just with all this flood of filth and flood of sin, people just fall into line. Like, well, I don't want to fight it. I don't want to be that voice. You know what? I'll be that voice. <laughs> I'll be that voice. It really has been shocking over the last couple of years, you know, because I really don't want people to forget like 2019, 2018. That wasn't that long ago. The world was massively different. even. Way different. In, in, a couple years ago and the way things are now the the way that the entire world has just fallen into lockstep and marching to the same beat now i've never the world has never ever seen anything like this i'm talking about the entire world has never seen the days that the type of times that we're living in right now there were there were regional things in the past there were things called world wars in the past, but what's happening now with the entire world marching to the same beat and everyone just, just regardless of, uh, of whether or not it made sense to their intellect, just capitulating. Yeah. Like and, I've and what's sad is some Christians are doing it. That's what's so mind blowing, you know? Um, and I'm, I'm saying, Christians, you know, um, but I've seen some Christians just saying, well, I accept this now and I accept that. And I was like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> you shouldn't. Mm -mm. That, you know, one of the scriptures that comes to my mind about thinking about the times that we're living in is um, 2 Timothy uh, 3, verse 1 through 5. And it says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, 
disobedient to parents. Man, that one is through the roof. Mm -hmm. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. So there's your, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, pride and sin, um, perversion, uh, truth breakers. I mean, dude, the truth means nothing now. The someone's word is worthless now. It used no. to be a very important thing, you know, a man keeping his word. Exactly. It says false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. I mean, they hate you if you're good. They hate yeah. you. If oh, yeah. Good. Traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of God godliness um but denying the power thereof i mean does that not perfectly describe our world today that is so are you are you old enough to remember all right i, I don't you got to be old to follow this one <laughs> the very first time i saw somebody take a selfie i was like what are they doing they're turning the camera on themselves and it's <laughs> and it's hard to say it now because everyone's done it yeah but when i grew up you know, before there were uh, yeah. iPhones or right. nobody ever, I had never seen in my entire, nobody ever turned a camera on themselves and took a picture. They might be on vacation by themselves and ask somebody, would you mind taking my picture? Because, right. you know, I, my husband wants to see how my vacation or whatever, but right. you'd never think of turning a camera because it was, it was too vain. Like you just wouldn't yes. do that. Like <laughs> it wasn't even thought. So the first time I saw somebody take a selfie, I'm like, you're pointing the camera at yourself. Yeah. Like, how important are you? Like, it, it really blew my mind. And now oh, yeah. it's, you know, I mean, the younger people watching this would be like, what does he mean? You know, we've all done this forever. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'm think, I thank God that I grew, I'm one, probably, I guess the last generation that I, I grew up remembering before the internet and before cell phones. I mean, you, you know, you can tell 20 year olds now things that they just didn't experience what, what you and I got to experience as, as children, the way we grew up. I mean, you know, I would, I told this kid recently, I was like, you know, when someone used to travel, you didn't know if they were alive or dead until they got there or, exactly. or they came back. I mean, you just, there was no way to get a hold of that person and they didn't have any way to get a hold of any. I mean, that's why they weren't send, cell phones. They send postcards when they remember they right. people would go on vacation and send their family postcards. Right. We're and having you, a lovely time. Wish you I'm were still here. alive. And <laughs> now it's like you can track someone live time, know where they are. You can have a video call and see their face. And it is a totally, totally different world. But but it, again, going back to the days of Lot, because uh, I, I just think it's important that people really grasp this tonight, that we are living in a very, very not normal, very unprecedented time. And it, it is exactly the time that the Bible describes a time when there's relatively normal scenario going on in the world where people are still buying things are still going out to dinner. They're still marrying and giving marriage. They're pursuing business endeavors. But like second Timothy said, people are, are wicked. There's perilous times. We have rumors of wars flying around everywhere. And that's the type of scenario that the Bible describes when Jesus shows up. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, how much more time? How how much more time can we eat and drink and marry and be given in marriage? How much more time? It just feels like we're right on the cusp of that seven year period to me. It really does. I, I think that's like the million dollar question. That's the that's the question that I keep asking. And and it's it's honestly as a believer in Christ, it's one of those big things that keeps me very excited and hopeful because mm. when I look out the window at the world, I'm just like, I do not, I do not see how it's possible for the chain of events that are, are now happening and have happened already for you to unscramble this, for things to go back to normal. I don't even see how it's possible for normal to last very much longer. Yeah, exactly. I really I'm don't. right with you. I am right with you. I can't see it. So I really feel like scripture gives us this kind of what I it's, I call it the rapture window. And it's like, there's this very specific scenario that God describes for when Jesus comes and, and that's where we're at. And it's not the type of thing that can just last and last and last and last and last for decades or for years and years and years. I mean, this is, this is a very incredible time that we're living in and we can't stop watching. It's true. 
And, you know, you mentioned the rapture window. I always mention the church age window. And I say, mm -hmm. look, when Jesus resurrected and he sailed off, the window was wide open. And for 2000 years, that window has just been slowly closing. And I really think now there's this tiny yeah. little sliver with a little light coming through and you better squeeze through that crack or you're going to miss the church age. You know, you're going to miss the rapture. <laughs> Hey man, place your faith in Jesus now, oh. guys. But he is the only name by which you can have salvation. There's only eternal life through him. He's the only rock. He's the only solid found foundation that there is. You look out at the world, like we're talking about tonight, everyone is either full of fear and anger and just confusion, or they know their creator and savior, Jesus Christ, and mm -hmm. they have a blessed hope. And yeah. death is no longer a fear because there is no sting to death because we have victory in Christ Jesus and we have eternal life to look forward to. You're one or the other. Exactly. Would you mind if I read a psalm? Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. I want to read this and I want to just tell you guys a story about this. Um, my oldest, biolo I've never told the story on my channel. My oldest biological brother, gotten a head-on collision 21 years ago wow. and he has been in a wheelchair ever since and he was in a coma for a month or a month and a half and when he got out of his coma he was a believer he got out of his coma he was kind of mumbling I was having a hard time understanding what he was saying but I was so thrilled because he wasn't supposed to live he died twice mm -hmm. the first day of the accident and they wow. kept telling us he's not going to make it he's not going to make it he's still here 21 years later but um so he he had asked me in a mumbling way, read the Bible for me, read something from the Bible. And I read Psalm 91 and I want to read it tonight because I know there's a lot of believers out there who love the Lord, but it's still that they're troubled mm -hmm. by what's going on in the world. And I, I just love the protection that, that God offers us. So I'm, I'll read this. It's it's Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Hmm. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you nor shall any plague come near your dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. Mm. How beautiful is that? What? That's, oh. that's the God we put our trust in, isn't it, Tyler? What a, what a blessing it is to, to serve a God like that. I mean, this is, this is the, the blessing and the, and the, privilege of being a believer in Jesus Christ, of being part of the family of Christ. I mean, listen, either you have no peace and no hope because you're trusting in what yourself, the government, come on, What's or trust? you have Jesus. Amen. And if you have Jesus, what, what Tom just read in Psalm 91 is yours. Mm hmm we have everything in Christ. I mean, what a privilege it is to be living for Christ. What a privilege it is to be part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. And, you know, I, I, I just want to bring up Ephesians 2. 
you know, I just want to make this very clear because I'm hoping there's some people here tonight or some people at some point who will see this video who might not even be, be believers. It this this privilege and this peace and this joy and this protection only comes from believing in Jesus Christ and living and walking with Jesus Christ. But it's not because of us. It's not because we're good or we're better people than anyone else. No. We're not at all. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of mm -hmm. God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. None of us can say, I've, I've earned some of this or I've accomplished my own peace. I've protected myself. Nothing can touch me. I have... Um, uh, I have gained eternal life as a hope for myself. None of us can say that, can no, we? No, none of us. I always tell the Watch Remover family, I always tell them, if we could earn this much of our salvation, Jesus right. would say, I'm not going to the cross, earn the rest. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can earn some of it, you can earn all of it because we can't earn 1% of our salvation. That's, that's right. 1%. That's right. And And that's why I say, you know, salvation, just, we are justified, all of us, everyone throughout history, both before Jesus, during Jesus' time, after Jesus' time, and after our, our time, it will only be salvation by grace through faith. There's not going to be a single person in heaven that's going to say, well, okay, Jesus died on the cross, but I did earn a little bit of my salvation. The you, know, you guys in the church age, y'all were grace only, y'all were faith only, but me in this other time, I did earn a little bit of it. Not, no, 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 none of us, not one. Yep. And so I, we we just want to make that clear tonight, guys, that this is this is the blessed uh, hope that we have. It is Jesus coming for us before this tribulation that we see on the horizon, and. Even aside from that, none of us know whether or not we're going to live or breathe another second. Exactly. But when you place your faith in Christ and you become born again and you're a, a new creation in Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit, then you have eternal life. You have forever to look forward to. It doesn't matter if you die today or tomorrow. You will be experiencing the rapture you will be in eternity with us in heaven forever with jesus and ruling and reigning with lord on on this earth for a thousand years in this kingdom and all of this is yours if you have christ exactly how awesome is that it's totally awesome the living god has a plan for us he and the really... living god grafted us in you know it's it's miraculous it's the greatest news that's ever been. Jesus is, there's nothing like him. There will never be anything like him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Our Savior, he's beautiful. Amen. Amen. So I, I think I, we got to touch on Israel one more time. Okay. Um, because we talked about like the days of Lot. I mean, I think you, you just can't describe it any better than the days of Lot. That's where we're at. Um, but I think Israel is really one of our even for the skeptic, you know, if, if you were, if you and I were to go to talk to someone and they say, well, prove to me that like Bible prophecy has happened and that we're living in the last days, you know, Israel yeah. is what I would say is the, the biggest prophetic sign you could ask for. Oh, what do you there's think? There's a past, there's a pastor in uh, Reno, Nevada named Steve Hadley. He's part of the Calvary Chapel, I think. And he, said something that had a great impact on my life about 10 years ago. I heard him say, he said, whenever I get a doubt, when those doubts creep in and I go, wait a minute, what's this all about? Like, is, is God real? I'm sorry, Lord, I'm questioning you. But is, he goes, one word pops into my head every time, Israel. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I thought, that's so true. Mm -hmm. What What other country, what other nation can we point the finger at that you can take their people and scatter them. I actually told this to an atheist once. You know what? He became a believer over time. Wow. Wow. I said, what other nation can you point to where all the people were scattered for 2,000 years, yet they didn't lose their language, their culture, their foods, their, their religion? 
you know, and they all came back to this nation born in one day, point to another nation. I, and, and the way I got him was I said, what's your great, great grandfather's name? And he said, I have no idea. And I said, they kept their language, culture and food for 2000 years. How many generations is that? You know, oh, it's it's absolutely a miracle. And there's no other way to describe it. And not only is what you just described and laid out true, but they were prophesied before. Before they were scattered, like so while they were still a nation, it was prophesied that they would be scattered across the face of the earth and that in the last days they would be brought back to their land. So not only never in the history of the world ever has a nation ceased to exist for you know almost 2000 years and then been brought back to their exact location with their language and culture and religion and everything intact, but it was all prophesied. And, and we've got Jeremiah 16, 14 through 15 says, and, and this is so cool, guys, because these are we're living in these days that Jeremiah 16, 14 through 15 describes. It says, therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Because that was like the biggest work that God had done heretofore with Israel, bringing them out of Egypt. I mean, the, the nations heard about that. But verse 15 says, but it will be said, as the Lord lives, who brought up the people of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where they, he had driven them, for I will bring them back to their own land that I gave to their fathers. We are living in those days. Incredible. There's no, even the skeptic cannot argue with this. It is, it is written in history. We have historical record that these scriptures have been in place before uh, oh, yeah. Israel was driven out of their land, and and they've come back exactly like the Bible said they would. I mean, biggest end time sign any skeptic could ask for. Exactly. And it's I always say right May there. May fourteenth, nineteen forty eight, the end times. You know, starting gun was shot off that day. Mm -hmm. You know, that was such a miraculous day. It really was huge, huge. And so, you know, going back to like a lot of people say, and I, I agree with this, you know, if you want to know what time it is on God's clock for the end times, look at Israel. And would, when you look at what's okay, so Israel's back in their land. So, I mean, that clock really started ticking May 14th, 1948, in my opinion. And I think yep. probably years too. Yes. But now you look at what's going on over there and, you know, we talked about these rabbis for the last several years have been saying that they're literally meeting with their Messiah behind closed doors. We have Israel clearly being on the road towards compromising and making this covenant with death. Like it describes in Isaiah 28, 15, it says, because ye have said, speaking to Israel, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through it shall not come unto us for we have made lies our refuge and under falsehood have we hidden ourselves and isn't that exactly it's, what we see israel like doing now we see we're them seeing it in real time that way we're seeing it in real time i mean the the day that Lapid gave that speech blew my mind. Now, I don't know, you know, he's an interim prime minister, but just to see that this agreement is forming the, and the Hezbollah, you know, Lebanon thing is just crazy. But I, I'm just blown away. I could just look at Israel alone with, and disregard all the other signs and my ears would be perked for end time stuff. So when you combine what's going on there with everything else, it's like, Guys, look up. Our redemption draws nigh. And they just keep compromising, don't they? Yeah, all, every time. Every time. And the mainstream media, I've, I'm trying to tell people, like, they forever, they're always blaming Israel. Israel it, Israel's gone for these negotiations. I've been watching it for 30 years. And every time, Israel always caves in. All right, we'll do what you want. And they always come back and say, no, 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 we want more. Because mm. they don't, they want Israel dead. You know, they don't want to make an agreement with them. But it's very interesting. This time just feels like this could be an agreement that perhaps could be improved upon by the Antichrist. 
Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, it, I really think that's the road that they're on. You you see these rabbis saying that they're talking to the Messiah. You see, um, and who knows whether or not that's true or not. I'm not saying that it is. I'm not saying that this guy is definitely the Antichrist that they're talking to. I don't know. But yeah. it's it's just we see them. There's people saying this over there in Israel, and they're they're very well respected and well known rabbis. But you see what Israel is doing. You see, you know, people like Lapid, the interim prime minister, in front of the UN, and he's saying, you know, we're 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 I want the two state solution. I, 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 you know, he quote he said, we want to live in peace, but only if it gives us security. I mean, that's like straight out of the Bible. It says exactly. when they shall say peace and security then sudden destruction comes. Exactly. Exactly. How long? How long can that last? You know, and, and we see them capitulating there. We see them capitulating and compromising with the Karish gas field. It's just incredible. It's like for all of history, Israel's been trying to learn the same lesson, haven't they? And they just they keep leaning on their, their own wits or their neighbors instead of on God. I can't imagine that day when they say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you know? That, what that a, just, yeah, what an incredible day that will be, won't it? Yeah, yeah, because they're going to go through some tough times, man, in those seven years. They are going to go through some tough times. Like they keep trying to, like, um, you know, what we see happening is throughout history and, and, and now even they're trying to make pay, peace and avoid confrontation instead of just trusting in the Lord and saying, no, the Lord gave us this land. No, I'm not worried about what you're going to do because my God said he's going to protect this land, that this land is his. Instead of doing that, they keep compromising. And it's exactly what we see is the Bible says is going to happen in the last days. They're going to compromise again and do a deal with the Antichrist yeah. because they want peace. They want security. But as always has been the case, they're not going to get peace and security, no, are they? No. no, they're going to get war. Do you think it's a Psalm eighty three war? I know. You no, know, I don't really know. I'm I, I'm I'm not sure if it's Psalm eighty three or just Ezekiel thirty eight or a combination of the two. I I'm I've got some kind of opinions on it, but I definitely feel like we absolutely see Ezekiel thirty eight happening. I'm not as sure or studied on the Psalm eighty three war. You know, he's a know great. That, you know, he's a great guy to watch. Have you ever watched the the channels called New News? Okay, and it's a guy named Ross. Okay, I highly recommend, highly recommend watching him. His stuff on the Psalm eighty three war is very convincing. He, he cool. he's a that's a good channel. Okay, cool. So, but we definitely see you know war coming their way, and we For see sure. them trying to avoid it. And you know, we see this Messiah talk. We see Third Temple talk. They're, they're building this train like you brought up to yep. the third simple area. They're, they're, they're the temple Institute over there is very excited about these red heifers that they have. I even saw, I don't know. Did you see this? There was a advertisement that they were showing for the, the temple uh, for the train that they're building. And they were showing these advertisements over there in Israel and they had people and rabbis and all these kinds of depictions in this art that they had drawn bringing animals onto oh, the train. I didn't see that. To be taken to the temple for sacrifice. Wow. Incredible. I mean, and you know, this is this is one of those deals, right? Like is didn't the Bible tell us in the book of uh Revelation and, and in Daniel and all these prophetic books that you know there's going to be a third temple and that they're going to be doing sacrifices and that, that doesn't exist yet right now as of October 17th, 2022. But we see the signs of Israel being excited about it and trying to make it happen, mm -hmm. like happening. It is. It's happening right before our eyes. It just, it feels like, and you know, I don't know if you've heard this, but I've heard they've said that they could literally build the temple when they have the political permission, they could have it up in three or four months. I have heard that's, that. That's yep. incredible. It's incredible. They could have it up very quickly. So we see all this going on with Israel, but then we look at the world and, and what do you see with the world as far as signs that the Bible has talked about that it's, you know, things that the, the Bible has prophesied for the end times. It, is the world looking like that? Not, not talking about Israel, but the rest of the world. What do you see? 
I just, I, I, what I keep saying and what I keep seeing is that the thing that blows me away is a lot of times when I first got into Bible prophecy and I heard Jesus talking about the signs that would happen in the end, I always looked at it from the worldview of the United States. Like I, I always thought like, well, when this happens to the United States and this happened, then we're going to get closer. To the, and I, I never really understood that. Wait a minute. It's a global thing. It's going to, and I think that's what really mm -hmm. surprises me the most is to just watch like every country since the beginning of the pandemic. I think that's kind of when it started where every country is kind of going through the same thing simultaneously. You know, you're watching, you're mm -hmm. watching governments fall and you're watching economies crash and you're watching pestilence mm -hmm. and it's, and it's a worldwide thing. Like every, you, we can talk to somebody in Ukraine or Russia or South Africa or, and they're all saying, well, this is the pain we're feeling. And we're like, well, we're not quite there yet, but we're heading there. That that's what surprises me the most. And that, but that's so biblical, but it's worldwide, mm -hmm. you know? I, I agree. I mean, it's, it's incredible to see the entire world, dealing with these same things. And, and when I look out at the world and I look at scripture, you know, I was telling this to someone the other day who's, who wasn't a believer. I was like, you know, cause he was talking about like, man, we're the news, you know, and like there's world war maybe about to happen. And then there's this famine that might be about to happen. And, and there's these crazy guys with uh, like Klaus Schwab and the world mm. economic forum. And they're talking about getting rid of cash. And, and I'm just listening to them. I'm like, did you know the Bible talks about all of that? And he was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, Revelation 6 talks about the four horses of the apocalypse and it's world war and it's famine. And, and it even specifically calls out wheat and grain and in that famine. And it talks about in, in Revelation 13, it talks about a, a, a worldwide government run by one evil guy and everyone's gonna have to submit and i was like all of this is in the bible that's exactly where we're heading and he was like whoa it talks about that stuff i was like yes it does yep yeah i mean incredible we we see everything with russia and ukraine and in the u.s and we see china and taiwan and iran and israel i mean any of these things could spark at any moment couldn't they it's, it feels like it literally any moment, like it could be tomorrow. It could be tonight. You know, this morning we woke up to these Iranian drones that Russia has that they're dropping on civilians and they're taking out power plants and in Kiev. And it's just it, chaos could break out at any moment. And I always say that all these I always use a puzzle analogy. And I always say all the signs, all these end time signs are putting up, you know, a piece of a puzzle. And it's forming a picture of the seven years. And I happen to believe we are right now, we've got maybe two or three puzzle pieces. And that last piece is the rapture. And once you click that into place, the seven years kick in. And I just think we're, we're so close. That picture has been painted mm. of the seven years. I agree. I, I wanted to ask you that because, and I'm glad you brought it up. You know, there's, for some reason, it seems like there are, are some Christians out there and I'm not knocking them for this at all because everyone, you know, None of us know. None no, of us exactly. know exactly when this rapture is going to happen. We do know it will happen yes. um, because the word of God says it will. And the word of God has been 100% accurate and it always will be because it is the word of God. But for some reason, there are some out there who are, are saying, you know, well, they, they think it just it's not going to happen quite yet. It can't happen quite yet. And I'm wondering, what is that puzzle piece? Some people are, are saying needs to be in place before. The rapture can happen is there anything in your mind or in your perspective where like you're, there's certain puzzle piece we're looking for before the rapture can happen i the only one i would say is war breaking out in israel possibly but it's so close like we could be raptured tonight and two hours later war could break out in israel you know that that's the only piece i don't see the uh, all the other pieces to me feel like they've been clicked into place right and uh, you know, when I look at scripture, I like, a, for instance, let's read this one, because I think this is a good one to kind of wrap things up with with what we're talking about. Are, how are you on time? Are you doing OK? Cause we yeah, might just I'm doing fine. Like five or 10 minutes or something. OK, um, I just don't want to keep you up too late because I know you're you're on that EST time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. OK, uh, but first Thessalonians five, uh, one through 11 says, 
But of the times and seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. That's what we're doing, guys. Exactly. For they that sleep in the night and they that are dr be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also you do. And that's what we're doing. Exactly. And it says, you know, while they're saying peace and security, sudden destruction will come, will come. They will not escape, but we will. So at least from my perspective, I can't see anywhere in the Bible a puzzle piece that says this has to happen before the rapture. I just see the world being wicked, the, the world being relatively normal. They're still being commerce and buying and selling and marrying and planting and building, but very wicked and not apocalyptic. And then boom, the rapture happens. And then the, the seven year tribulation just starts rolling. Exactly. We're there. We're there. I, I, I tell my people that watch me, those beautiful people, I tell them every single day, we are there. Like, I can't see. I can't look a year down the road. I can't see it. It just, all the signs are there. And we're just looking up and we're waiting. And I feel like a thief in the night. I, you know, I don't think anyone's ever going to guess the day or the hour. I really don't, right. you know, yeah. and it's just going to. It's going to surprise us as much as it's going to surprise the world, except we're going to know what it is and where we're going, our, our destination, and the world's going to be in total chaos and fear. But we're there. Right. And and, and the one difference we have from the world is that we see it coming. Oh, for you know, sure. For it's sure. like they're not even going to see it coming. It's going to happen, and they're going to be like, what was that? But exactly. you and I are sitting here doing a video saying we see it coming. But we don't know when it's going to happen, but we nope. see it but coming. Look up. Look up. Like people get, they just go crazy when you and I say, the Lord's coming soon. And they're like, they hate like yeah, what yeah. do you mean by soon? Define it. <laughs> define it. And it's like, I can't. That's, that's a soon. swear word. That is a swear word today, yeah. saying the word soon. soon you know, yeah. <laughs> they, they, that sets them off. You know, <laughs> you've been saying that for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Because in relativity, since yep. ninth, since May 14th, 1948, we're still in that soon period. You know, we're in the last 80 or whatever years before Jesus takes us home. It's soon. Right. Somebody okay. said it to me in my comments today. Define soon. When is soon? And I said, soon is the day he appears. Or, or when will you stop saying soon? And I said, the day he appears and takes us home. Hmm. Amen. So, I mean, candidly, I'm with you. I, when I look at it next year, and again, I'm not setting a date. I'm not saying that the rapture is going to happen this year or next year because I don't know. Yeah, I do believe it could happen at any moment. I don't believe personally there's something we're waiting on or that something really needs to be in place first. I think everything is here for the rapture to happen at any moment. There's nothing that we're waiting on, in my opinion. Um, but when I look out at next year, just from a human perspective, okay, I'm not talking biblically here, but from a human perspective when i look out at the world and i'm i think about the the chain of events that are occurring the the situation with supply chains and governments and militaries and uh pestilences and all these things hmm. i don't see how next year can be normal definitely not you know that's just my perspective it's not a prophecy it's not a prediction yeah. i'm yeah. just saying like uh very human fallen um in no way brilliant or special me 
when I look out at next year, I just think, man, I don't know how next year is normal. No. Is that, is that your perspective? That's, that's exactly that? my perspective. I, I don't see the, the buying, selling. We're, we're, you know, I really think that the world powers that are trying to crash all the economies, I think ours is probably the hardest to crack mm-hmm. because it was the most powerful economy, you know, and I think they're having a harder time than they thought. But man, mm-hmm. they have, they've done it. They've hit all the check boxes and we're just waiting for that fall. And, mm-hmm. and I, I, I think it could happen next week or two. I really do. I've been watching the stock market and and I just think this rally this week, it's just kind of, I smile at it. It's like, you guys have no idea. Don't put your faith in money. You mm-hmm. have no idea. This does not have a future. You mm-hmm. know, this, the future of this and Bitcoin. And, you know, there are people just saying, get in Bitcoin now because it's low. And they jump at it. It's like, you guys have no idea what you're doing, you know. And some people are all like, oh, everything's going to get fixed in the midterms. No, no, no yeah, right. <laughs> okay. When do, when do politicians fix anything? <laughs> I don't I mean it's I'm, people, you know, we some Christians honestly, I'm going to I'm going to be real with you guys here. Some Christians we read the Bible and we look at what Israel did, you know, going through the wilderness and God's like dropping meat from heaven and he's got this column of a fire in front of them and they're still like turning their backs and doubting and you're like, "What is wrong with them? I wouldn't have done that." Well, here we are, okay? And we have all these Christians who are just got all their hope in a man, in a politician and in midterms. And it's like, have you not learned your lesson? Exactly. Politicians are not going to save you. It's no way. It's not going to fix everything. No way. So we're no, you know, these we're no different than than Israel was and forgetting so quickly and not learning lessons. And I mean, guys, you know, this is why I say what the Lord has put on my heart is this, it's exact. It comes from Exodus. It comes from what God or what um, Moses was saying to the Israelites. And that is fear, not hold fast and keep your eyes on Jesus. Because that's what, what Moses was saying to Israel when they were coming out of the wilderness and brought them to the Red Sea. He said, fear not stand fast and see the salvation that the Lord will work for you this day. Because those who come to persecute you and destroy you, you will see them no more. Mm. That's where we're at, isn't it? We're at like a Red Sea moment. We're exactly at that moment. We're we're standing on the edge of that sea, and I feel like we're waiting for those waters to part. You know, it's incredible. It's incredible that we were put here at Mm. this time. What a time to be alive. It really is. I mean, I think what what we have to continually like get together like this as family, and we got to encourage each other because we have to remind each other because we're all human. We're all Yes. frail humans you know our strength is not in ourselves it's in jesus and we've got to remind each other like guys turn your eyes away from pharaoh's army and just look out at that sea and just know know that god's gonna split it he's got a he's got a plan for us because mm. we have a blessed hope that's where our eyes need to be not on not on what's going on in the world not at everything that's coming for us but exactly. on who is coming to get us exactly praise god you know so i just love that you and i can get together and talk and our family can be here with us in the live chat and talk and we can encourage each other as we see that day approaching it's coming quick tyler it's coming quick it is man well thank you for being here with us tonight um i i think you know one of the last things i wanted to ask you that in closing is you know um what is it that God has put on your heart or why do you, why do you like to watch for the return of the Lord? Why do you think it's a good thing that we, we continually get together and kind of bring up these end time subjects and, and talking about the rapture? Like, have you seen that as a benefit in your life? And have have you seen it bring benefit to other people's lives in, in, in the chat that comment on your channel? Oh boy. Yeah. I've, I've been wired towards, eschatology, Bible prophecy. I, I I was a teenager when I learned about the rapture and, and the wow. seven year tribulation. And then, you know, and I'm, I'm old. So that was a long time ago, mm-hmm. but I think I, I can't put into words the blessings God has given me through the comments of my videos of believers that it's, it just seems like if I get down, I get in those comments and the Lord, just through those wonderful people, he just lifts me up. Mm. 
And when I get discouraged, there's always somebody there. That's, that the Lord has provided so much support for me through this because I, I've got really bad Lyme disease. I'm always in pain. Wow. And and I can't walk very well anymore. And, it, and I was like a teenager. Three years ago, I was hiking for two hours a day. Wow. And But the Lord has been through this it's been so present through this entire journey and i just i just love that we're a family and i love that i i tell i tell the people that watch my videos all the time like you guys are going to get so sick of me in eternity because like i'm going to be bugging you guys but we're going to be a family yes it's never going to end no nope. and it's not going to have any of the dysfunctions that our families here on earth have God, yeah. and for those of you with you know parents that let you down like you've got a father in heaven that's going to just love you more than you've ever been loved and there's such hope we have such hope and i think i just want everyone to realize that it is our blessed hope we're waiting for the god of the universe we're waiting for jesus to meet us in the clouds and snatch us out of this wicked perverse awful world we're seeing right now and he has a plan you know mm -hmm. and i i think about it you know i always say as you get older it's hard. when you're a kid you can get goosebumps over a popsicle you know like <laughs> oh i got the grape one. Oh, i have goosebumps you know as mm -hmm. you get older it's it's physically harder to get goosebumps the only thing that gives me goosebumps is there are times where i'm in prayer and i start thinking about his plan for us and when I start thinking about his plan for us, I literally start getting goosebumps and I say, Lord, you're the only one who can give me those, yeah. you know, and it's just knowing that, that we're in the palm of his hand and he has a plan for us. We don't have to worry about anything. All this mm -hmm. crazy stuff going on in the world. If you belong to Jesus, you just rest in his arms. You just rest. Let him love you. Mm. Amen, man. Amen. And one of my favorite things is, you know, not only is their salvation by placing your faith in Christ. But, you know, what is a story without a happy ending? I mean, we all just intuitively know that, don't we, as humans? Like, who goes to movies or reads books where the story just kind of ends? Like, there's, there's no, there's no wrap-up and there's no happy ending. That's, we just know there needs to be a happy ending. So when you think of salvation, you think of the gospel— it didn't just end at the cross. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't come and die on the cross and pay for our sins and then just be like, peace, I'm out. <laughs> That's not the end, guys. So we are saved by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. truly believing in him. But what it, we just read earlier you know, in, in the scripture, there's a hope of salvation. I'll, and this is what I wanted to to close with personally tonight is first Peter one 13. It says, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That is the happy ending. It, there it is. That, salvation. You know, the story, the gospel is Jesus came he shed his blood on the cross for us. He died and he rose again on the third day. And he's coming, coming back. back. So I think some people get mad at you and mad at I for me for um for they think we're we're talking too much about the rapture or the end times. And my my deal is like I just see it as a package. Like it's salvation by believing in Jesus. And he's coming back. That's that's the gospel. It's the whole story. I don't want to tell just part of the story. Yeah, I want to give everybody the whole story. I think a lot of people love the world and they just don't want to pull away from it. You know, I just really do. I really and and that's sad to say. I think a lot of believers too. They they like their life, and it's like I, I want to finish my life and I want to have a proper death before I go see. You know, it's like it's like I want Jesus to rescue me. You know, and I and I have a heart for the the lost and the left behind. I really do. I mean, but mm. but I'm I'm ready. Like, come yeah, Lord man. Jesus. Amen. Well, praise God for what you're you're doing there on your channel and in the community that people have there and and people coming to the Lord and um Lord, I, I just I think all of you tonight for being here with us in the chat and encouraging each other, encouraging Tom and I and 
Um, we encourage you to leave your comments below in this video and pray for each other and encourage each other and, you know, share whatever it is the Lord is putting on your heart. Uh, I wanted to sh last thing, and then we'll then we'll close it up. Uh, I got to show this poll because I, you know, Tom and I like to to show what people are thinking or what people are saying. And this was cool. This is a poll that I put out. I don't know if you can see it very clearly, but it says, "Do you believe we're living in the last days?" Comment below as to why you answered yes or no. And there's three thousand four hundred votes, which is a lot. And 98% said, yes, I believe these are the last days. And 2% said, no, I think we have a very long time to go. Wow. I mean, so again, it's not my opinion. It's not Tom's opinion. There's a lot out there. Yeah. Isn't that cool? It is really cool. It's really uh, cool. Hey, thanks well, for having me on, Tyler. I really thanks, uh, Tom. I appreciate it, guys. Bless me. Until we see you next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Bye-bye.